So once it has had a chance to dry a little bit, it doesn't have to dry completely, but dry a little bit. I'm going to take and start adding some darker areas because you can see this pine cone is not all one color brown. There's especially dark areas in here where they kind of meet together. There's a lot of shadow in there. So I am going to take and use some darker brown. In order to make darker brown, I can actually just use less water on my brush and more paint. So I'll dip it more in the paint that I've created and not dip it so much in the water that I have. And then I'm going to go in very carefully add those darker areas on my pine cone. So I can add in those shadows wherever I see them on my pine cone. And they're going to have lots of shadows. It's not going to be just one. So I'm going to add those in all along the edges where that shows up on my pine cone. And I'm looking at my pine cone to help me figure out where to put the shadows to. So I'm not just making it up as I go along kind of thing. I'm looking at that pine cone and seeing, oh, there's a shadow here, there's a shadow here. And you can see I'm kind of getting where my brush doesn't have as much paint on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tap and get some of that off of there. And then I can take and I can kind of drag my shadows a little bit so that they're not just straight lines. And they kind of come up just a little bit. So that they look more like a shadow that's going from dark to light instead of just a line that I painted on there. And I'm going to keep going with the shadows. And notice I haven't had to add a whole lot of paint back on my brush yet. I will have to add some on, but I don't have to add it every time I make a shadow because then I'll get way too much on my brush and it'll be hard to manage it. So I'm just going to add it when it kind of feels like the brush isn't working so well. That's usually a sign that you need to add either some water or some paint to your brush. I'm going to keep adding these shadows to that pine cone. All the way until I get that completely filled in. Wherever I see shadows on my pine cone. It looks like I'm starting to get it a little too light, so I'm going to add a little more brown to my brush. brown in here, add in the shadows. And then you can do the same thing on the branch. If there's darker parts of that brown part on your branch, you might have to add some shadows on there too. But a lot of your brown part of your branch is going to be covered up with your green parts anyways. So you can kind of see which parts show, which parts need to have a little bit of darker brown added to them. I'm going to add a little bit. When I look at my branch, I can see that it's a little darker in some of these spots where the branches, the little needles, kind of make a shadow on the branch. So I add those darker spots on there. Now remember, you're the artist, so you can go back in and you can check. Oh, this part looks like it needs to be a little darker. I'm going to add some more shadow in there. Oh, this part looks like it needs to be um, left just the way it is, so I'm not going to touch anything there. So you decide. You're the artist. Once you have that all done, um, the pine branch, you're going to have to go in and add the green branches. So make sure you have a green that you like, that you think looks something like what you have on your branch. So look, mix the, that green up until you get a good green for that needle. 
and then you're going to start painting again very carefully because your needles are so small on this branch. So you're going to have to very carefully follow along those. Oh, looks like I don't have enough paint on my brush. It's kind of showing up clear on there. I'm going to paint that green in very carefully. And just like we did with the pine cones, when you're done doing the green on the branches, you can go ahead and add in some more green over top of it to make it a little darker if there's some spots that are too light or things like that. So I'm just carefully adding in those green spots all over my pine branch, my conifer. And you'll notice when I started painting these, I actually dabbed my brush off on the practice paper. And that was just to make it so that there's not too much water on my brush. Because if there's a lot, you'll see how it kind of beads up. And that's going to make it hard to stay inside the lines when I'm painting. Since these are such small little spaces that I have to paint, I want to try to have as little bit of water on my brush as I can to try to stay inside those lines need just enough that the water paint will still work. I have all my green done, but it looks like some of these areas could be a little darker green. So I'm going to go back over some of them, fill them back in with a little bit darker green so that they show up a little more. just like that. And once you have all of this painted in and you're satisfied with the way it looks, then you can take your time and very carefully paint in the background one solid color. So you can paint it red or blue or yellow, but you're going to be very careful because you want to go right around the edges of these. And when you do that, you want to make sure this is a little bit dry. So start on the outside edge of your paper, and then when you get close, you can be very careful and go around it because if it's wet, it might smear a little, so we're going to let it dry by starting with the outside edges and paint all the way around it. 